Now we're going to dive deeper into understanding token design. We have talked about we have talked about the token economics framework. We talked about market design, which is the design of the environment. When we have participants participants coming together to to interact, we need to design this environment so that they feel safe to interact, and you don't want them to to be transacting off chain. Then what's the point of your your ecosystem anyway, right? We talked about mechanism design. They are part of incentive mechanisms and they are rules of the game. How do you govern people's actions? How do you govern people's interactions? Now we're going to look at token design. Token design itself is tokens are the incentive itself. So we want to design the tokens. We want to, we want to design tokens in a way that incentivizes specific kinds of behaviors. And when we talk about token design, we are, we are going to look at, um, we also have to take into consideration for two things. The first one is the function of their tokens. The second one is going to be a fungible and non-fungible tokens. Of course, there are going to be a lot more things to, to consider, but these are just um, you know, some main things that you put at the back of your head as we go through this lesson. In token design, we're going to look at monetary token policy, financial incentives, as well as architecture. And today we're going to focus on token policy. So what does token design include first? everything that's related to the token so we want to when when i talk about everything that's related to the token in general and since this is about economics we talk about demand and supply so when, when you talk about demand we want to understand um what incentivizes people to behave that way what kind of specific behaviors do they do they um create or do they have and why do they do what they do and since tokens are the incentive itself we can alter that a little bit more so, and that's for demand. For supply, we look at the level of token supply available. We, how do we change that? Do we want fixed supply? Do we want a dynamic supply? Do we want um, reducing supply? What kind of supply models are, are good for your token ecosystem based on your objectives? And when, when we have demand and supply coming together, what do we get? We get prices. We get to understand the price level of tokens. How do you price the tokens? Uh, why should we be priced this way? What are the things that will affect the prices? Um, are prices constant? Are prices dynamic? These are the things to consider. And lastly, how is the token governed? Remember I said token policy is about how the, the token is being governed and managed. So how is the token being governed? Is it governed by people? Is it governed by automation? Is it a combination of both? And how how is it being governed? So instead of just a piggy bank that governs everything or where you just put money in and then it just collates. We can execute a lot more things um, through automation and we can design tokens in a very, very interesting, unique and innovative way. Okay, so to get started, what are the some considerations? And as I said that the very important consideration is the function of tokens. There are four main functions of tokens. The first one is security. So security is where Two things. It's firstly, it's packed to an underlying asset that earns money or that can generate revenue. And so the second thing will be you, you now, you now able to get future cash flow from the underlying asset. So that's security. Of course, you've got other things like the how we test to test if it's a security or not. Um, yeah, you can go Google that and find out more about, about it. The other one's utility. A utility is where you get access to a platform. So, it's a, a utility is a function where you, you can get access into the platform. You can't earn future revenues, but you can be part of this platform and part of this ecosystem. Money is a currency. So money will be will have um, the function of, of a money. So it's store sort of value, uh, a unit of account, and where you can transfer with each other. Pack token. So pack, it, people call it stable coin. But I guess stablecoin can be quite confusing because it's like, oh, it's not stable. It changes all the time. Yeah, of course, because it's stable relative to something. It's stable relative to USD. It's stable relative to euros. It's stable relative to something. So a better word will be a pegged token, where it's pegged to an underlying um, currency or pegged to something. And so it, it changes accordingly. It's different from security because security allows you to earn future cash flows, whereas a pegged token is where it's just pegged to an underlying asset. If USD increases, um, the pack token, the pack token to USD also increases. If euros falls, the pack token valuation or price level also falls. So it's just a simple pack. 
Then, so that's just the functions. Basically, the different functions will determine the different token design, the, the different types of variables to consider, the different factors that will be added into the token design. Then we also look at the different um, economic domains. So we have monetary economics, which builds quite a bit, a big part of the foundations of token design, because the foundations can be can be um, applied across the different types of functions quite easily. We have financial economics. So this would be more of securities and maybe some parts of, of money because that's how you, uh, this is also more involved in the, the DeFi movement and how do you, how do you link, um, how do you look at new creative ways or creative use cases of financial econ economics in the blockchain space. And lastly, you have property rights. So property rights are just rights that attach to your tokens. And there are also new creative ways to, to explore that. So I put these three down is because if you need more information or if you want to look, if you want to think of more um, ideas and, and adapt these foundational ideas into your token design, you can look deeper into these three domains. So before we start, it's got to think, why the hell do we need token design? Isn't, isn't um, mechanism design enough and the tokens are just incentives, we just put it there and you know, it's just going to, to run. It's an incentive anyway, people want the tokens. True, tokens are incentive itself and we want to design these incentives. But why do we want to design the incentives? Because they are a medium to get to the objectives. And the objective of the ecosystem is something that we talk a lot about in the second lesson. And there could be very different types of objectives. Everything that we are designing, the whole token economics ecosystem is to to achieve these objectives that is being stated. And since tokens are the incentive mechanisms, we want to make sure that we are designing properly to achieve these objectives. So you can have a lot of different types of object objectives. You can be encouraging users to save the tokens, you want users to use the tokens, you want to increase brand, brand exposure uh, via the tokens. You have a lot of um, ways to, to, there are a lot of different types of objectives of the ecosystem. And you've got to really have that down so that you can design the incentives, which are your tokens, properly to achieve these objectives. And also, they, they depend on the different factors. We have a lot of different factors you can see in, in the little circle. And the different types of, of um, objectives of the ecosystem requires different types of this factors to consider. Not everything is equally relevant or not everything is relevant, but a, a good foundation of it is pretty relevant. Now, are they equally relevant? I already said, well, they're not equally relevant, but if we look, we take a step back. I really say, no, they're not equally relevant, but if we take a step back to not just, to not just the, the token design factors itself, but to look at the types of DLT systems. We have permission DLT systems and permissionless DLT systems. And for permissionless, it would be stuff like your know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, a lot of a lot of things that is just out there. Many factors are relevant. However, for permissioned blockchains, you have stuff like um, RC Corda, you have stuff like your know, Microsoft, uh, you have got Hyperledger, um, you have all these permission blockchains where where it's it's not always relevant because for token maybe they don't have tokens and so we don't need to talk about token design at all. However, they can be they can be useful in deciding the different rules and incentives in place. Also, they might not be these permission ecosystems might not have fungible tokens, but they could have non-fungible tokens, and the design of them can be quite useful for permission blockchain as well. Um, Sometimes when we talk about rules and incentives, this is where we talk a little bit more about mechanism design. And, you know, a lot of things can be executed in permission blockchain using smart contracts or recording contracts. And that will be, that'd be enough. But sometimes you also need permission. You also need some form of tokens because smart contracts can, cannot be executed without tokens. They need tokens to, to execute and to run. So that's why some, that's why token design can be relevant to some permission blockchains. So 
when we think of economic, when we think of mechanism design and token design, both of them are, are incentive mechanisms. They're incentive mechanisms that, that, that define the rules in, in this ecosystem. However, I split them up into two different sectors because or segments because mechanism design is the design of the system, the system as a whole. Whereas token design is design of the incentive, the medium that moves around the ecosystem. That's why they are different. And also they are not equally relevant. Because as I mentioned, mechanism design is relevant in both permissioned and permissionless DLT systems, whereas token design is it's relevant or it's more relevant to ecosystems that has tokens, fungible and non-fungible tokens, but there's tokens. So that's something important, or there's something to, to, to put at the back of your mind when you're designing tokens. So now we go back to token design 101 and look a little bit deeper at what is what what the what how and why of tokens token design. What is token design? Token design is the engineering of, of tokens, which are the main incentive of the ecosystem. So there are two stages to token design. One is the design part, where we look at the different inputs, output variables, the concepts that we have, the overall big picture of what we want to achieve, the, the objectives to achieve, the the, um, what to optimize. And then we have the engineering part, which is token engineering or the design of token engineering. It's where it's, it talks a little bit more about the math, the models used, the how to, how to achieve the objectives and how to implement the, the design. So you have the economics part and then the engineering part. So how are they, how, how are they, um, done? How is token design done? It's rules embedded and coded into the tokens. So for example, how the tokens will be managed and governed, the functions and the rights of the tokens. And why do we want to do that? Once again, it goes back to the core foundation that tokens are the main incentive of the ecosystem. So we want to influence the behaviors of the participants. So for example, if we change the cost and, and benefits of the choices, then it would affect the behaviors of the participants because now we're thinking of substitution effects of one asset to the other because now the relative cost has decreased and the savings cost has increased. So people would change their behaviors. So there are a lot of small microeconomics um, considerations and analysis going on in the background. This is where the economics part comes in. And this is something to consider when we are doing the engineering mathematics part and understand what, what are these, um, what's the impact on the behaviors of participants. So there are a lot of a lot of big concepts coming into place and they can be quite messy for now. But as we go through the lesson, you will start to see a bit more clarity of how they all link together and how are they related to each other. In general, economics and engineering are very, very closely related. Engi and economics is more of the analysis part, engineering is more of the, the harder mathematics part. And you, you need them to collaborate together so that the systems that you, you design or the tokens that you design are not just going to be too mathematical or too theoretical. Um, they're, they're going to come together where, where both systems help to enforce each other's objectives to achieve the objective of the entire ecosystem. So when we look at token design factors, what do we want to consider? We want to, we want to make sure that the token policy is well-defined. Token policies are the attributes of the tokens and that they are well-defined. We want to, make sure that we reward financial incentives for participants to join the ecosystem and we look at the different incentive features. And lastly, we also want to design the, the architecture of the, the tokens architecture. And, and these can be stuff like your lockup periods, your property rights, even identity on, of the tokens. And lastly, to sum all of them up, because I said engineering is also part of token design, is your mathematics. So the different models, the different concepts, the different um, formulas involved, and this can be ed audited and edited to make sure that the, the tokens is the, the token is being designed properly.